Hello, everyone. I have two special guests on the podcast today. One is Morgan from Two Hot Takes, which you can see if you're looking at the camera, if you're on YouTube, if you're somewhere where you can see us. And the second guest is a little, I like to call fuzzball, the little teeny peanut Deacon, the dog I've been talking about getting is on the podcast right now in Morgan's lap. So she's so She's going to be our little third guest. I hope she has something to say at some point. Oh my God. She's adorable. I know. Thank you. The most precious. She's a baby. baby. She's a Lakeland Terrier. If you guys are want to know or look it up, but I will say when you Google Lakeland Terrier, this is my personal opinion. The photos of the dogs are really, really not cute. Like I look at the photos. I'm like, Oh God, they groom them really weird. I grew up with a Welsh Terrier. That's why I got a Terrier. She's a baby. So that's my little fuzz. She'll have something to say. I'm sure she's not dated yet. So she won't have a ton to say, but still. Yeah. Today's episode, I want to talk about. (laughs) She hasn't dated yet. (laughs) She hasn't dated yet, but like, we'll see. She might have some feedback, some input. Um, I want to talk about if he wanted to, he would, because I feel like all of the podcasts, all of the TikTok thing that's coming back around, people are talking about it again. And there's some hot takes on that that I want to talk about. Also about phases of a relationship because we were just cracking up about like the different phases and the memories that you have. Yeah. Of like things that you did that you're like, why did I do that? I could have skipped that phase. And then also when a relationship is good, not great. I'll explain why. We had a listener write in and I think that it'll make a lot of sense once I read this. And then also um, weaponize incompetence Ooh. and the flags that Morgan and I both have from our past dating, um, like just relationships that we had. We both have a ring on our finger. We're both very much in a t- relationship, but <gasps> I didn't wear it today. I was like, wait a minute. I forgot it. You Ugh. scared the crap out of me. I'm no. like, oh my God. I'm like, I was just texting Justin with you. I'm like, what, what, <laughs> no, why didn't still, you warn me? We're still happily engaged, I was say. Um, but I, I forget to put mine on a lot. Okay. Well, I just, I'm, I'm like, really hearty with my hands. You know? I know I do too, but I've been trying to be better because one time I set it down. I couldn't remember where I set it down. I about had a freak out oh. and then I'm like, okay, we're not going to, I'm going to take it off only in in the bathroom ring dish because this is not we can't be doing that so anyway let's dive into it because i think today's going to be a little bit juicy let's go real quick let's just talk about our like current status of wedding yeah. wedding planning. Cause I feel like obviously we're talking about dating, but people want to know. Um, I want to know where you, what you're doing. If you've done anything, <laughs> I'm just chilling. <laughs> I'm a little bit unusual where I want to get married at my family's like farm. Mm-hmm. Just like, it's where I grew up. It's got a big red barn. Um, so I'm doing that, but I have like a little bit of a process to go through with the city where we had to get our place rezoned. Oh. So I went to a city council meeting the other night. It is approved. Okay. So now I'm locking in a fall of 2025 wedding. Oh my God, fun. Yeah. I'm so excited for you. We might elope before that. Yeah. And like, just so I can have my grandma there and like do something. Oh, that's right. um, but yeah, it'll be, I think fall of 2025. Yeah. Unless it magically gets done sooner. And then I'm just going to be like, hi everyone, come to our engagement party. And it's a It'll wedding. Like this, this, this. Yeah. Are you turning, cause aren't you turning the barn into a venue? So the barn is going to be like a gateway onto okay. the property. And then yeah. we're building a second, like a new venue. Oh, sweet. So it's going to be like a bit of like old country charm, historical stuff with um the new like modern venue i love that it's a mix of and it's so cool because it's in your home city and it's like like family you know what i mean like yeah i just think that's the coolest thing ever i just love it there it's just like my happy place it is you're always happy when you're here i feel like i love minnesota i know me too i love it i know we're total minnesota girls like we just love it through and through like yes i love a california i love a new york hustle but something about minnesota about this place keeps me coming back keeps me staying how about you did you pick a date we did not pick a date. Nope. Okay. We did not pick okay. a date. I like okay. this. I'm also, how, let's see, I'm six months out. No, I'm five months out from being engaged, mm-hmm. I think, because July was when I got engaged. So December. Yeah. So a five-ish, six. Um, we're going, though, to Arizona over New Year's Eve. Look at and some we're going to go spots. look at some venues. Hey, yeah. So we're hanging Arizona. Um, if it's not Arizona, it'll either be here in our backyard or at the course that Jordan plays at out here, which it's Winsong. Do you know what okay. that is? It's a golf course. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just am not, I really want to get out of here for it because we, I grew up here. I did all the things here. Like right now you're in LA, right? Mm-hmm. Like your family's here 
it makes 110% like sense that you'd come home for your wedding in Duluth. Like it just, it's beautiful. But I, I just, I'm like, I got to get out of here. Like I, I want it to be an escape more so because yeah. I'm already here full time. Arizona is really pretty for and weddings Arizona, too. Yeah. And like we, a nice fall. Mm -hmm. We're thinking fall 2025 yeah. actually too. So here we go. Yeah. So we were thinking here we go. at first we were like November. So like maybe winter, but then we realized how freaking far that is away. That's like literally two years away. Mm -hmm. So we'll see TBD. Yeah. But we're going to go look at some venues. We're going to check out some cacti and see what's going on out there. Who knows? So. You could get there and you're like, wait, you have an opening next fall. I know. Let's do we it. We never know. That's what I like. It's like, don't put so much stress on yourselves when you're planning. No. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be happy. Yeah. And just go with it. I know. And do whatever makes you guys the happiest. Don't try to appease other people. I know for a fact that I'm like, I, I think there's things that I'm not going to spend money on that I'm like, okay, I'm there's things that I really need to save up for. There's things that I'm like, I don't think I'm going to do flowers really. Like I really mm -hmm. don't think I'm going to, but I'm excited for one of the venues because Jordan was like, absolutely not. We're not getting married in, in Italy. We're not going overseas. And I, I but it first, has that vibe, but it has a vibe. Oh, I love and that. I wanted to so bad. And I was like, come on. You want the Lake Como. Yeah. yeah. You want the Lake but Como vibe without this, the price tag. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this is like the cheap version of Italy and it is just beautiful. So TBD anyway, how to give you guys a quick update about that because yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. I love it. Dog, wedding. What else am I going to do right now? No, I'm not having babies. I have my period right now. So don't even say that. No one, <laughs> no one out there, by the way. Don't manifest that for us. Yeah, exactly. Um, shout out Alice, by the way. Um, she's a coffee, what, a barista? Is that what they call them? Yeah. Barista? Yeah. Out in um, Minnetonka, I guess would it be? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. She said she recognized Morgan today and um, she's a well said and two hot takes listener. So thanks for um, supporting and loving us, Alice. We're just excited that you gave us some love. E thank you. Okay. So I want to talk about this concept of sorry for um, <laughs> Deacon on the mic. She's having a good time. She's nudging the mic. If he wanted to, he would. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's talking about it right now. Oh, I've lived through that so many times. Me too. And I have a hot take of I don't think that's always the case. She's biting Morgan's. I'm just ignoring it. It's fine. <laughs> if she gets to be too much, we'll just put her like out there. We'll, we'll yeah. call it. You just have to tell me when. Go um, I think that there's two options for this. Like, I really, truly think that if he wanted to, he would is, is a hundred percent a thing. If you're already talking, that's what I think. Yeah. If he wanted to, he would, if you're talking already, if you're having, let's say even if it's from casual all the way up to like you're dating, you're seeing each other, you're in a relationship. I think the answer is yes. Now take a step back. If he wanted to, he would from somebody you don't really like know yet, or you have a crush on. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think some people don't have the courage, the balls, however you want to say it to kind of start something. So that's when you have to initiate and start the thing. But what are your thoughts on that? I agree. It's a little bit of twofold. Like, I think the most excited someone's going to be about you is usually in the early phases of things. Deacon. Do you, do you need to take a nap? Deacon, I think it's time for you to exit. She did so well. Though. I know, but she's being a little chew okay, meister. goodbye. Hold on. Quick, quick break. Goodbye. Say goodbye. 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 Okay, yeah. cut you off. No, 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 you're good. The, we had a puppy pause. Yeah. Um, I think it depends because I look at... I look at some of the guys that I really tried to make things work with. Like I had ginormous crushes on them mm -hmm. and I was the one putting all the, if she wants to, she will work in. Like Fair. I was the one driving six hours to go watch them play hockey and oh stay in their hotel room. And then they would fly out the next day. Like mm -hmm. I, I was the goofball. And the I would, goofball. Yeah. And I just put so much time and effort in when it wasn't reciprocated at all. And it was just like, mm. oh, like, hey, morgues. It was just that kind of like, Playful. The breadcrumbing. Yeah. They, they weren't giving me much, but they were giving me something, which in my head yeah. was hope. Meanwhile, I met Justin, mm -hmm. who I'm now engaged to, and it was very clear from the start that he was interested. He was excited. He was talking about things um, that I was interested in. He was putting in all this effort. He was really trying to get to know me and continuously following up, asking when we can go grab drinks, when we can go to a movie. There was so much effort coming from his end from the beginning. And that's what was so different versus I'm the one putting in a lot more effort or, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of unclear if they like me, but they, they're willing to hang out and do stuff, but it was never like they were the ones really engaging with me. Yeah. And it's so interesting when you reflect on those is like the engagement thing, like that we got from Justin and Jordan, Jordan, mm -hmm. my fiance, 
I thought this was like, oh my gosh, like, what is this? Like, this is weird. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is weird. Like, why are you so into me? Like, yeah. You, what? yeah, you're, you're like showing me way too many cards right now. Like you're acting like you like me already. That's a little weird. Then you get confused. I was so confused. I'm I literally like, was like, is this normal? Yeah. You think I'm it's like, not normal. I, I was so confused. I had, cause every other guy, I was like, is this, I literally remember telling my friend, I was like, is this what it feels like when someone actually likes you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we, because of maybe past experiences, I remember like thinking like, oh, this feels too safe. This feels too easy. But that's actually how it should be. It should feel. You shouldn't feel on edge. And like, there's like a, a quote that's gone around where it's like, if you feel butterflies all the time, it's like, that might not be the healthiest. Yeah. But it's like, no, like you still like get excited. He'll look at me and he'll be like, wow, you look really good today. Oh, he says that. And I'm like, Ugh. and you still get like so excited and you still feel things yeah. even years in the, the, the relationship. Yeah. yeah. It just feels safe and comfortable and I can be myself. Yeah. And I remember an ex um, that I dated for two and a half, almost three years. And I remember driving, he picked me up from the airport and we were headed back to his place, which was like maybe two and a half, three hours away from the airport. Yeah. And I remember being in the car and having nothing to talk about. Oh my God, I've gone there before. Even though we hadn't seen each other, we should be catching up. And I just remember sitting there in the car being like, is this what you get to mm -hmm. in, a, in a relationship? Like where you have nothing to talk about? Yep. You're not even like really excited to catch up. Yep. And I'm like, how do you go through this the rest of your life? Yes. And I just sat there in the car and I'm like, oh my God, this can't be normal. I've been in that position before too. It was so it's strange, weird. that realization. I would used to get nervous about going on dates with the person because I didn't know we were going to talk about sitting down at dinner. Yeah. Like I like almost would have to make an arsenal in my head of like, oh, I haven't really asked him about this. Maybe I should ask him about that. Okay. I'll save that for dinner because I would get nervous mm -hmm. and anxious. And on the flip side, I remember being in those relationships or situationships more so yep. and thinking that one bad day I could lose them completely because like that feeling, I don't know how else to describe it's it. It's just it's too like, fragile. It's fragile. Yeah. yeah. It's like you're worried. Even if you, you say what you're feeling or state your opinion that you might lose them in that moment. Isn't and that that's, wild? that's the craziest thing is about with Jordan is like in your, these stable relationships yeah. is like a bad day. It's actually really secure. Like I can have a shitty day or we can have a shitty day or shitty convo where I made a mistake and I shouldn't have like nitpicked or picked a fight on something. And five minutes later, we're hugging and we're cuddling in bed because we're so happy to just be with each other. Yeah. And it's okay. And it's, it's not fragile. No. It's secure. And there's, there's times where you should be comfortable in the silence with your partner. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between that, that silence that is comfortable and the silence that you're like in your head, like, this is weird. Yeah. And we went out to dinner with one of Justin's friends last night. We had this conversation. We're like, how fun is it to go out with your partner and you sit there at the restaurant or the bar or wherever you are and you just kind of people watch? Yeah, it's fun. Because you're so comfortable sitting there with each other and you kind of just like look around. Yes. And he was telling us, he was like, yeah, you know, me and Brooke are at the bar and there was this girl that was out to dinner with her parents and she was so excited at the beginning. And then by the end, she oh. wasn't. So we came up with this like backstory for her oh that she was, you know, meeting up with her parents and they were having a serious conversation of them cutting her off. And I was like, damn, that is so fun. It's fun. And that's comfortable. Yes. That and, is a great way to put it too. And something else you mentioned too, where you're like, you know, you realize you have these off days and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think fighting is okay mm -hmm. if it's little it's, you know, you're going to have big ones too, but it's not constant and it's how you communicate and grow from those fights. Yeah, absolutely. No relationship is perfect, but it's how you come out the other side and how you listen to each other, respect each other, communicate and how you move forward. And how you make change. Yeah. Like, is it, are you actually going to make an effort to like, oh, wow, that hurt my person's feelings. Yeah. Not, I shouldn't do that. Yeah. Or in the fight is, yeah. Like you talk about respect is, yeah. and is it a fight worth fighting? For instance, old relationships, any shit I could find, I would probably poke at it. Any shit I could find because I was upset and confused and not in a good place. But with Jordan, it's like, does he always put the bag back in the trash bin after he takes the trash out? <laughs> no, he doesn't. Does he always put the dirty dishes in the dirty dishwasher that I just unloaded from the sink? Scotty, see all the animals want to be with us today. I know. No, he doesn't. But at the same time, I'm like, could, is that really a necessary fight? Did he go out of his way the other day to go get all new stockings for us and a new Christmas tree and to surprise me? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So why am I going to be so upset that there's a fork in the in the sink? 
Like it's just dumb. You pick and you choose pick. your battles. You pick and you choose. So for my ladies out there that are wondering if he wanted to, he would. The answer is yes. Yeah. The answer is absolutely yes. Like if you are sitting there and you're confused and you're trying to reason for that person, stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Stop reasoning for them. Stop wasting your breath on their reasoning. The worst part about being in a an awkward like situationship or recent relationship is that I think you have to you you have to come up with reasons why or why not in your head in order to have a good balance like to, in order to feel secure. You're like, "Well, maybe he did this because this." Yeah, that's why. Scotty <laughs> is on Morgan and loving her I up know. right now. We have to just do a, a clip of all the we animal do. interactions <laughs> as you're talking. Just like just Scotty. Hi. Scotty bumped the mic too because he wants to say something. He's such a lover. He loves you. Look at that. He's a cuddle bug. He's really cute. He okay. is a little baby. You okay, Scotty. Right you there. just as long as you just relax, Scotty, you can be in here all you want. But truly, I, I run into this with friends too, is they're reasoning for the guy. And what I mean by that is oh, like they I mean, come up with any anything, excuse for him, anything, why he didn't do this, why he did do this, why he even in the worst instances, why or why not he ended things like I think he actually did got X. I think he actually was nervous about the future or no nervous about our my family. And I'm like, no, no. And it's hurtful and it's hard to say to your yeah. friends, but no. And it's really one of those things. I know everyone. It's like, it's not you. It's him. A lot of times it is mm -hmm. like, you don't have to make excuses for him. He doesn't need it. Bottom line, he wasn't interested and he wasn't your person and that's okay. Don't waste any more time trying to rationalize this. I think like two things, Yeah, the devil doesn't need an advocate Yep. and uh, closure is pretty overrated. Yep. It is like it. You don't need that closure. Like take it as it was a learning experience. It wasn't a good match. You don't need to understand why look out for those red flags mm -hmm. or as my dad calls it, like your shit meter oh, of what yeah. you're willing to tolerate, it's going to be like more selective based on that mm -hmm. and just move forward. And yep. I know a lot of times we need, or we think we need like to rationalize or have that closure, but you don't, you don't, you deserve it. better. And the right person is not going to make you feel on edge or like you need to understand what's wrong or what's happening. It's going to feel easy to communicate and be on the same page. I've never felt like something's wrong with me when I'm with Jordan. Like, yeah. that's what I want you to understand. And we'll mm -hmm. talk about flags in a second. Oh, and like I'm so excited. Three things to ask yourself. Like if you're in something and you're wondering like, am I in something that's off? Am I like giving too much and he's taking a lot or vice versa? But um, no, I, I completely agree with all of the things that you just said because it, uh, the the knowing and needing to know reason of why you ended, it doesn't work like that, babes. Like if I wouldn't have stopped obsessing over somebody who I was trying to see if they still wanted me, even though they were like dating someone at the same time as me. And I was like, how can I get them to like me more? Mm -hmm. How can I get them to want me back? Like if I just give them the silent treatment, they'll come crawling back and then everything will be perfect again. It's like, you don't think they're going to do that again? They will. I you just, don't think they're going to. Yeah. Like it's a matter of time. It's just pattern. Like they're going to, if they're immature and they're still in their immature cycle, they, if he wants to, he would, that still stands clear. And when he comes back trickling back because you left zero breadcrumbs, you know, like maybe one little breadcrumb with a hot Instagram story one, one or two times. And he's like, now all of a sudden responding again, it's like, don't be fooled, babes. He's doing this to other people too. Like you oh, got to come back around and remember what you just went through with the same person. Yeah. And they always come back. They always come back. It's Every like, time. it's like gravity. It's like guaranteed. And I remember I was like two years into dating Justin and the one guy that I would travel drive hours for to go see and watch him play hockey. And it was just, I was so obsessed with him. Cause he was like, he was like a little cowboy. It was just, it was crazy. And Two years into dating Justin, he like two years. Yeah. He like sent me, it was either like a message on Instagram or a snap. And he's like, how are you Morgs? Like, send me a picture of your cute little face. And I'm like, what? are you fucking kidding? I me? literally got the ick so hard. And I just like, I opened and like, didn't say a damn thing. Cause like, obviously well, no I'm happy shit. in a relationship, yeah. but I literally was like, Ugh, oh, no, that would have worked. That would have worked two years ago. Had I not met Justin and now had this like 
amazing relationship to compare it to. And now you're ready. Uh, now you're ready for my cute little face. That's the breadcrumb. Oh, that's, you do. Oh, that's the breadcrumb. Gross. I can't stand that shit. I literally had an ex, the one that like I dated for a really long time, thought I would marry him. He literally broke up with me by like ghosting me and then like was like, you deserve better, the traditional text. But he ended up like getting hit by a car. Oh. And after he got hit by the car, he came back to me and he's like, I realized how bad I treated you. Do you want to come to Mexico for Christmas? Let's reconnect. Couple couple days after that, ghosting again. I go, no. Three years later, you getting hit by a car and you're still the same dude. You're still the same dude. You're still the same dude with the same issues and I the know. same commitment, phobia and whatever the whatever hell that it is. was. Yeah. I remember two, two exes. One found out I was dating my Jordan and coincidentally they have the same name. Now you can f- try to figure out who that is. Go for it. Start Googling, try to figure it out. <laughs> but, um, he was like, you're, you're dating someone. Cause I saw him out like probably like f- six months into it, maybe yeah. six to nine months into it. And I was like, yep. Yeah. And he goes, w- w- no, you're not. And I'm like, yes, I am. And Did you like, think I was going to wait around for you? He goes, no, you're not. What do you mean? And I go, I'm dating someone. He's like, well, are you happy? And I'm like, actually, yeah, yeah, I'm very happy. And he goes, that can't be, that can't be true. He was Just actually, I've never mess. seen him like that before, like actually cared. Then what he tried to do, he took my purse and got an Uber, tried to leave. And I said, where did he just go? And everyone's like, what, who? I'm like, you know who? And he, he had ran downstairs. He was standing, waiting to get in an Uber and had my purse. He was trying to take it. So I would have to come find him. Oh my God. I was like, you're a psychotic. Second one. When I also thought I was going to marry, had so many issues. Yeah. I, can't, I won't even go into it into detail. Basically, I had been, I mean, my heart was still longing for him for a really long time. That's the hard part is you have to fight your heart Ew. and you have yeah. to reteach yourself what's okay and remind yourself of the bad because you'll just reminisce on the good. Those rose colored glasses come on real fast oh, after. Oh, they do. And they are thick. And I remember he moved to a different city. I was going to be in the city. And I said, Hey, when I'm out there, I'd love to see you. Like, let's just have a coffee. Cause I, I'm not going to lie. I was still hurting. My heart was still yeah. hurting. And I wanted to, I had no, he made some changes. I get out there. He ghosts me for two days. He gets blacked out. And we had like plans finally to like have coffee at like 10 AM the next day, slept through it, was blacked out. And like, I had to fly out at noon or like, you know, go to the airport at noon. And if he wants to make the effort, he would have, he would have. And I literally was like, that was the icing on the cake to close the door forever. I was like, and he, of course he apologizes. He's like, I'm sorry. I was just nervous. I was worried. I was scared. All this bullshit in my ear. And I was like, no, actually I'm going to make the choice to move on. Yeah. So with all of those flags that we just talked about, I know. what are your biggest flags from dating? Because oh. I wrote down, I actually wrote down six, but they're kind of specific because I think they can be vague. Yeah. But these are specific and we we, we should go each. Yeah. Even. I think if you go on a date with someone and they start talking about an ex. Oh. That's a big red flag for me. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hear about your ex. It kind of shows that maybe you're not over them or like maybe you're using it as like, a tactic Mm -hmm. to make. And I'm just like, I don't want to hear about your ex. I want to get to know you for you. And then maybe later on, if there's something you want to talk about, like that your ex did that instilled like mistrust, or if it's something that like, like say, Hey, my ex, you know, towards the end was working late all the time. And that, Mm -hmm. that kind of just put me on edge. So like I found out they were cheating if that happens, can yeah. we just like openly talk about like, hey, I'm actually working late, blah, blah, blah. We all have those quirks, right? I think and a lot of us end up having those conversations later, but yeah. not on the first. No, don't, don't do it. know about you on the first date. And you guys don't do it either. There's something I've seen where this girl has this tactic. All of her exes have cheated on her. She didn't have great exes, but is she going to let her new partner know that? Absolutely not. Because it just shows that guy what you're willing to tolerate. Oh, do not shit. talk about your exes. Do not talk about cheating. Do not talk about how bad they treated you. They treated me great. I was treated like a princess. The standard and the bar is then set here. That is so freaking true. I have never thought of it like that. Literally the light bulb that I like had ding. I'm like, damn, is oh, this damn. why then the people like the hockey guy were already at a bar? The bar was so low because I had established the bar was in hell. Oh my God. <gasps> I did not realize that. Yeah. I, I, and I definitely did that in my old relationships. Don't do it. Oh Don't my God, do it. I feel like, whoa, I just had an epiphany. I know. Epiphany. <laughs> so that's no. a, that's a big one for huge, me. Huge. Bad boundaries mm. with family. 
Oh, sh- I didn't write that one down, but that is definitely in my top five. And I yeah. didn't write it down. I love the word enmeshment. Like my people know they're just like enmeshment and mama's boys. I can't. You have to be able to draw clear boundaries with your family. You can't sacrifice your own happiness to make your family happy, or you can't sacrifice you and your partner's happiness. Like if you're going to pick your mom over me because you don't want your mom upset with you, or you're scared to have a conversation with your mom, that's a problem for me. Well, then there's no set boundary. And then what happens when you've got like the house and the kids and the marriage? What other boundaries are they going to start crossing? Yeah. Where does the buck stop? It won't stop. The people pleasing needs to stop. My God, when I stopped people pleasing, my life got astronomically better. I promise you, you saying no is not going to hurt their feelings that bad. And if it does, they need to figure their self out. Seriously. So that's a good one. Yeah. Another one I have is negative talk. I think if you go on dates with someone and they're constantly pointing out negative things that pertain to you, that's a big red flag. Give an example. So like you go on a date with a guy and you have microbladed eyebrows or you have thicker eyebrows and on the date, he's constantly saying, you know what? I'm just like not really into people that have thicker eyebrows or have gotten microblading done or I'm not really into tattoos. I think tattoos are gross. Oh, I've gotten that one before. But you have a bunch of tattoos. I think there's some people that will talk negative like that or like neg you in order to take your confidence down. So then you try to seek their validation. Because then you're the one chasing. They try to like reverse psychology on you. So you're the chaser. It's a Jedi mind trick. And that- that to me, I'm like, that leads to way bigger issues like gaslighting. It it kind of is a form of gaslighting. It is. And I think it just like, it says a lot about a person and what issues are going to stem down the road. I've had the tattoo one happen. And then I've had the one where they say, I don't like girls who like dye their hair. I'm pretty sure I had like highlights in my hair. Oh my God. And they're like, I don't, I just don't like when like girls, like, like people highlight or dye their hair. And like, those are like, your hair's like natural, obviously. Right. No, and I was I get, like, oh no, no, not you, you not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, uh, no I dyed my no, hair. No, I just got it done no, yesterday. I, definitely, I got my hair toned like two days ago because I just like like it in a deeper like yeah. color. And I have to get rid of the highlights that I used to have on my ends. That's why I have to like to- keep toning my freaking mm-hmm. hair because it just will like lighten again. And I'm like, God damn it. But I was like, who are you, first of all, to have an opinion on what any woman does or the classic like, I don't like when girls do Botox or like, I don't like when girls have filler or like, I'm like, excuse me, mister. I like all the girls photos on Instagram who are like thotties in Miami, which they are hot. Let's just be real. They are. But I'm like, shut your fucking mouth. They have filler. They've had plastic surgery. Like, do you think that ass is real? No, it's a BBL. Or they're like, I don't like when girls have fake boobs. I don't care what your opinion is actually. And I'm oh like the fact gosh. that you don't like that, but then you're like, a, you've got like seven subscriptions on OnlyFans. Yeah. Stop talking to me. Stop talking I, to I me. can't. I, I think it's so manipulative. It's so manipulative. The fact though, that we would put up with this behavior. Like, so like anybody out there, I mean, you can be in your early twenties or twenties, thirties, forties. I don't care where you are. You could be divorced and redating again. Yeah. Ground yourself right now in this conversation. And please, for the love of God, have a red flag alert in your brain. When you hear something that's like, wait a minute, I've heard this before. Or like, wait a minute, I've heard that this is not a good sign before. Yeah. Why does it sound familiar? Ooh, I heard it on Wilson. Heard it there first. Um, are those, is that your list? Did you have one more? I do have one more. Okay. I'm ready. It's weaponized incompetence. Oh, and we're about to talk about that one. Yeah. So I'll hear yours and then we can, okay. we'll bring them back. Cause that's a big one. Huge. And I want to talk about that and we've got to write in for that one. So BRB to that thought, but my list was he scolds you for asking him questions about his phone. Mm. I remember this one when I was early in re- like relationships or early talking to people. It was the like, why would you even ask me that? Or like, why would that even matter? Kind of make making you feel stupid when you clearly saw something that was maybe a little bit off. Yeah. I'm not talking about when you're looking through their phone. That's a whole nother boundary. I'm talking when their phone's sitting on the table and you see, you know, a woman's name. Their ex-girlfriend's calling them. Yeah. That you are aware of because they obviously talked about their ex on their first date. Yeah. Um, But making you feel stupid for having a question and just trying to understand the situation, assuming you're jealous when it's like, okay, but no, that that's just not normal. It's defensiveness. It's them trying to deflect from the situation and, 
Again, it's very intentional. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're trying to flip the script and put it back on you when Mm -hmm. it's not on you. Second one I wrote was avoids apologizing or having any real conversation whatsoever Mm -hmm. if there's any sort of conflict. This one is a tall tale sign of bad communication, avoidant personality, get the hell out right away. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the like, let's say, for instance, their phone was off that night and you were supposed to meet up. Let's just call it like how it is. Like you were out at the bar. You're like, hey, I'm here. I would love to meet up with you. And for some odd reason, their phone is dead. And the next morning you're like, that's kind of annoying that we were planning on meeting up and you were nowhere to be found. And all of a sudden it's like, I can't do this right now. Or I'm not dealing with this. Uh, My phone just died or avoid it, avoid it, avoid. Yeah. That is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Oh my God. Defensiveness. So it's like this relationship expert, John Gottman. He's incredible. He can predict relationships failing with like 95% accuracy. Like it's amazing. Whoa. Defensiveness and the inability to take like accountability is one of them. Defensiveness, uh, contempt, criticism, and stonewalling. Oh, wow. Yeah. Stonewalling. What's that one? Uh, if you get in a fight yeah. and your partner just shuts down and ignores you. Yep. That's what I figured it was, which yeah. uh, not a good sign because you no. will never be able to get through the stonewall. No. Let's just be real. Third one I wrote is he ignores you for more than a day. Yeah. Stonewalling right there. Why did no. I ever put up with that? Like they would just disappear for a day. And I was like, oh no. Oh my God. Are we done? Like I'm the one worrying. Literally. I thought my ex died when he would ignore me. He would, he would go silent on the weekends and then, oh, I didn't really have good service. Oh, p- Sir, you're in Canada, not the North pole. Yeah. Come on with come that. Come on. I can't. And, and little me, I'm like, oh my God, he didn't have service. I wonder if he was out in the woods. No. Like what was he doing? No. Like they should not ignore you. And if you're busy, just check in. Hey, I'm going to be busy all day today at work. I don't, I can't text nonstop. Just check in and communicate. There's a level of care that has to go into this. Like there's a level of it. Like my ex would disappear for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours from being so fucked up. Oh, and then, sorry, I just passed out. I swear my phone was dead. I swear. Well, guess what? That is all a lie, by the way. So like, don't fall for it, ladies. Even if that's the case, even let's just say like they're, they're not, um, they're a boy's, you know, boy's boy. And they just were really actually just fucked up running around the bars. Okay. I don't care that relationship or that relationship with alcohol. One is probably terrible relationship with their boys and not having balance. And that behavior is also weird. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful of the weird, like gaps in communication and time. There's a basic level of respect yeah. that's required in a relationship. Thank you. Um, number four, I said he is shady at the bar. I wrote this one down because I think I was just deep in my ex thoughts and like what I would happen with. Yeah. But if they're acting like you go there, you you know, before the bar, they were talking about how excited they were to be with you, how hyped they were. The and then they ignore you. They were weird. And then you go to the bar and they ignore you. Yeah. They should be willing to hold your hand at the bar or make out with you at the bar. <sighs> if they're acting goofy and won't do any, like, I know some people aren't in a PDA, but if they're very much so like standoffish towards you and avoiding you, there's another girl there. And you're planning on going home with him? I know. I'm like, babes, no. I remember there was one of my guy friends in college and he was dating this girl that lived in California. She came out to visit, but he was also having sex with the bartender. Oh, Jesus Christ. And it was, it was at like the library bar in Dinky Town. It's now like college oh club. But I just like watching this all go down. I'm like, what are you doing, you asshole? Oh, like, no. I hate this so I much. know. And they both thought they were the only ones. It was just like, it was so brutal to watch. Guys are octopuses at times. I don't know how they have enough hands to be doing all that. Like, just like juggling the world like that. I'm like, okay. So bad. Um, Two more. I said, he seems too good to be true. Lots of words and admiration and admiring Love overly. Love bombing. Love bombing. Ooh. Love bombing is a tall tale sign that something is wrong. And there's been a few write-ins. I haven't gotten to all of them, but I read them all that are about like, he has given me all this love and attention. Like he was once a cheater. Like, what do you think? Um, I think I might write, read one of them that I'm thinking about today. And I will just tell you that that's a flag. That's a flag, flag beyond flag. It's yeah. weird. It's not normal to be that in love with somebody or admiration right off the bat. You don't know them. No. And there's like, there's a difference because I think a lot of us, and then you like think in your head is like, is he love bombing me or is he just genuinely interested? And you might not be able to tell right away. It might be so borderline where you're like, ah, so you just kind of have to feel it out. But I think love bombing usually is way more aggressive. It like, it is so heavy and 
so much from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Gifts, attention. You're my soulmate. I can't envision my life with anyone else now. Like it's so aggressive from the jump. There also is the fight though, where it's like, I really like love being with you or the weird, like you're hooking up for the first time and the L word comes out and you're like, did that mean something in your brain? You're like, no, it's the first time you've ever hooked up. How could they, they don't even know you. Yeah. You know? So you just have to be careful and aware of like, also I got love bombed a lot after the fact of my ex doing something really messed up, but I didn't know Mm -hmm. because they disappear. They felt bad. It's usually like, I feel bad. I'm going to like spill the beans on like, I love you so much. I couldn't live without you. You're my perfect person blah, blah, blah. So watch out for that too. Final one. Um, this one is a personal one is like, they might drink too much and don't remember what they said. And it's a repetitive pattern. So just like be mindful and aware of the weird habits that are happening. Like, um, relationships with substances and different things like that, I think is a flag of like the person needs to have alone time and figure out their battles. Yeah. That sounds like a really unhealthy relationship with alcohol you dealt with. Yes. Very, very. And many, a few of them actually, which I think I accidentally, in a weird way, I think we look for patterns and what we've already seen, good or bad. Yeah. So we end up going for a person that looks a little bit similar to what we've already had because similarities are familiar. And fam- familiarity, even when toxic, kind of at times can make us feel safe. Yeah. Which is kind of scary. Yeah. Well, and I think like we're kind of at an age, and especially like if you're college aged, I think you kind of like start thinking like, what is my relationship with alcohol looking like? Mm-hmm. Like I myself, like I'm I'm not really drinking right now. Like if I do go out and have a drink, it's like a glass of champagne. It's something Mm -hmm. light, bubbly. It makes me happy, but it doesn't change my personality. It doesn't, Mm -hmm. it's not like tequila where you have, you know, a couple and you're like, I'm getting kind of mean. So I think we all get to a point where we really start evaluating our relationship with alcohol and that's just normal. It's kind of a part of life. It's a part of life. And it's one thing I think that I, I'm glad that I didn't I stayed true to myself and didn't listen to other people's opinions on Yeah, like you're, you're in your twenties. You're allowed to have fun. I'm like, I'm very aware. Yeah. But what makes me feel good on a Sunday might be different than the next person. Like what makes me feel good on a Sunday is when I wake up, not hungover and didn't waste my day away. Oh my gosh. And although I'm not wasting my Sunday away, I can still have fun. I still had a glass of wine or two. I still did everything I wanted to do. I still actually, sometimes a night in is actually all I need and is really, really fun too. Yeah. So I just, be mindful of all of those things as you're like thinking about flags. Yeah. Definitely. Weaponized incompetence. I'm like eager to get Ooh, to this one. Yeah. It is a tough one to deal with. Um, I came across a Reddit story that like really provoked it for me. And it's essentially when someone will purposefully do something bad. Mm-hmm. So they're not asked to do it again. For example, like one Reddit story I've read in the past is like, this um, guy was like doing the laundry, like her and her boyfriend were taking turns doing it. Every time he did the laundry, he did it bad. He would bleach her clothes every single time, ruined her favorite dress. And so it was just one of those things where he was purposefully doing things bad or not doing them at all so he wouldn't have to do them again. And she got to a point where she's like, I'm going to address this weaponized incompetence with my own. So she had a big, (laughs) important family dinner of his that she had to go to. So she wore her favorite black dress that got bleached. She brought a Sharpie in the car, started coloring the bleach stains, made it look worse. People from his family commented on it. And she's like, oh, you know, poor Jacob. He just can't do laundry. So he messed it up. But I, you know, it's my favorite dress. Guess who started doing laundry? Okay. After that. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. I feel like I haven't dealt with weaponizing competence besides for, I think, cooking. Mm. cooking is one that I think is really interesting that I have seen in past is like, or, um, maybe what was the other one? I had one of the grocery shopping, grocery shopping. That was going to say it was food related. Grocery shopping drives me nuts. What did you do before me? Like you can't go to the store and pick out a bag of tortilla chips. You got to call me. I see so many people that will literally make a full list for their partner and put pictures on it. Oh, I don't put pictures on it. I'm like, you should freaking know we bought it 17 times. What did you do before me? Or if it's something where it's like, they'll, they'll ask you a question. And it's like, you're the one that taught me how to do this. What do you mean? Why are you asking me? I taught you or you taught me. Oh. When is it weaponizing competence versus, um, just not trying like, cause I've seen it with like, okay, ex dishwashing, right? Like they, they would freaking ruin my pans. Cause they would like fry shit at like a hundred degrees with like oh. grease and oil. And then they'd clean it and it would just be 
just caked on with bullshit. And then I'd go to use it and it's dirty again. When is it weaponized incompetence or when is it like laziness? You know what I mean? I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah, maybe it and is it, both. It also, I feel like weaponized incompetence kind of plays into the respect thing where it's mm-hmm. like, you don't respect me or you expect me to do this for you. And it's just one of those things. It's just not a healthy dynamic. And I think if they're doing that early on, it's going to transpire into every aspect of your relationship. Oh. Like if you choose to get married and then have kids, it's it's just going to just siphon into everything. And I think it goes into a lot. And I think, you know, I'm speaking as a woman, like I think traditionally we put up with a lot. I know. And there's this one thing I just saw where um, mom doesn't get a stocking and oh. dad's dads don't know that they're supposed to fill mom's stockings. So moms on Christmas day end up with all these empty stockings. That makes me feel sick inside. And it's like, it's like, that's kind of, again, weaponized incompetence. Like, oh, I just thought it got done. No, you're supposed to do it. I won't lie. My mom didn't really get a stocking until I would fill it. I know. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I, I, oh, that makes me really sad. Or like the classic, like you get the kids get the Valentine's day gift and then the mom's like, what the hell? Where, where's mine? And yep. like later there's a card on the table that like you could tell they probably bought that day. It was it's like not even in the like envelope, you know, yeah. and it's just that makes me feel so icky. And I will say the biggest lesson my grandma always said too, and I think we all know this one is that if it's a problem now, it will be even larger of a problem later. Yep. Like you, like for instance, getting in a relationship and you see these things that maybe behaviorally you're like, I don't really, uh, I don't really like that. I have a few with Jordan, right? Like we're all human. We've got them. Yeah. They still bother me, but I choose to not let them bother me. Like he still does the laundry terribly, but he's always done it that way. And he does his own and I do my own. Mm -hmm. Not my problem. Separated. Doesn't matter. There you go. Doesn't matter because he's doing his own. I'm doing my own, right? But did that change from the first day that we met to us getting engaged, about to get married? No, not even at all. He's always been bad. He's always been bad. (laughs) So it's like when things are there though, that are so obviously bad, it will get worse. Like if they're a bad communicator, it's going to just get worse. Yeah. If Jordan for a while was a gamer, he stopped gaming now because he knows like he's like, he made the own decision of like, this is not worth my time. I could probably be working or investing in my relationships. I don't know, maybe even working out, you know, like But that was his decision. Yeah. But for a while there, I was like, whoa, this gaming bugged me and I didn't say anything and he's still gaming and now I'm getting pissed off. (laughs) It won't change. It's not just going to go away. It's up to them if it goes away and it just gets worse. So please be mindful of the little flags that you have in your head. I know. Um, You have a weaponized incompetence story. I know. I'll read this and then we can all kind of see what we think about it. So this is from Am I the Asshole? It's titled, Am I the Asshole for Telling My Boyfriend to order whatever he wants for dinner, then getting upset with his choice. I, 20 female, have been dating this guy, 28 male, for about seven months. I'm not a picky eater at all, but I'm allergic to shellfish. Mm -hmm. He knows that. When deciding what to eat, I told him he could pick, and he ordered shrimp scampi for two. I was annoyed because I can't eat that, and he got defensive because I told him it was his choice and that's what he chose. I didn't think I had to specify, you can pick something for us, but we both have to be able to eat it. I thought it was implied. Why order food for someone knowing they can't eat it? But he thinks whatever meant whatever and that it's my fault. Am I the asshole? Lord have mercy incompetence. I can't, it's annoying. It is the weaponized incompetence. It's it, like, well, no, you told me it's like quit with the fucking pointing the finger. I said, you can order whatever you want, but maybe it should be something that's not going to kill me if I eat it. Um, her throat will probably close. My dad has a allergic to shellfish too. Yeah. And Jordan just frankly hates it. And I know if I'm choosing dinner and it's my choice, but he's like, whatever you'd like, I'm not going to cook shrimp. Because he hates it. He thinks it's so gross. Or if that's, if that's what you want. Hard. No. And if that's what you want, you order it. Make sure I have something I can actually eat. That's annoying. That that sounds like a communication gap and also underlying issues that we're not seeing. It's coming out in the food choice. Yeah. He's also clearly not listening. And it sounds a little, I mean, this is a, kind of a stretch because I don't know about their relationship, but like narcissism tendencies of like, I'm literally only thinking about myself. And once I, I created a problem for somebody, instead of saying, 
oh my God, I completely, I, I messed up. I'm so sorry. Let me order something Let's else. Order something else. Or let me, I could make you like this. Um, or I'll just, yeah, just get another pasta. I'll quick order it. and I'll go pick it up real quick. Yeah. We all make mistakes. We all have those slips. Like I had yes. a mental slip today and like accidentally said something like, and I'm like, oh fuck. Like we all have those moments. So if it was a genuine accident and it just like slipped his mind, he saw it on DoorDash or the menu and he was like, I really want this. Like sounds good. That yeah. happens. You guys have been together seven months. Like you should know, but hey, whatever. Just be accountable. Don't be defensive. And oh, well, you said whatever I wanted. Blah, blah, blah. Just, I'm sorry. I'll eat both portions. I'll have it for lunch. Let me get you something else. I call Easy. it a tit for tat like dynamic and that's, that's a red the flag. shit that I hate the most. Yeah. Like, I should have wrote that down as my number one, really, truly. Tit for tat mentality is so unhealthy. I had to teach Jordan what it was, but he, he's not a tit for tatter, but he, he at yeah. times, I think in arguments because of what I think would be from previous relationships and how they worked, mm -hmm. um, had that in the beginning of like, what I mean by tit for tat is like, let's just say I said, well, I ordered the scampi, um, you know, and I didn't realize it and whatever. And he's like, well, I, you told me I could order whatever I want, or I don't know how to explain this in, in an instance yeah. like that's similar. I'm trying to think of an example of like, um, like well, if you're in a fight, you know? Yeah. It's someone, it's like you ignored me all yeah. day. So now I'm going to ignore you all day tomorrow. Yes, exactly. It's, it's almost like retaliation. Like yes. I accidentally did something or maybe they intentionally did something, but instead of healthily communicating through it, it's, I'm going to do something to also hurt you because yes. you hurt me. It's, it's retaliation. It is retaliation. Like the classic would be, I think in the beginning was like, Jordan, I just asked you to do the dishes and you couldn't do that. And he's like, I've asked you to do like, um, shovel the entryway, but you didn't do that clearly. You know what I mean? It's like, you're yeah. like, what, what the fuck? I'm not talking about that. I, it's like, or you couldn't, you know, it's like this quick witted, like, well, you didn't do that either. And it's, it's just, it's icky behavior. I know. And that's what that sounds like to me. Like yeah. weaponized incompetence met with a tit for tat mentality is like the recipe for a spiraling relationship. Yeah. Or if like you get in a fight and they bring up something from like six months ago and it's like, I didn't know that upset you. That. Like, like you're just telling me this now. I'm not psychic. Like if your partner is expecting you to be psychic, that's a problem. Like I didn't know that upset you and you're holding it against me six months later. And then you feel really embarrassed. Yeah. I felt that feeling when you find out that something bothered them for that long. Yeah. And you're thinking in your head, like, all those nights that we spent just like cuddling up in bed or like, you know, on a really good date. Yeah. And I asked, Hey, is anything bugging you that we need to talk about? Or like good relationships. Yeah. You should kind of reflect on that. Yeah. Check in. And you didn't tell me that this shit was bothering you for that long. No, that's, that is, Oh, it's the ickiest feeling I've been there. And it's icky. Oh, and I do it too. Like I am really guilty of bottling stuff up sometimes and like yeah. just trying to like get in my head, like, Oh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And then when you know, you kind of have a little breakdown. You're like, ah, mm -hmm. don't bottle stuff up. No. Communicate. Get it all out there. Like try to at least. Try I to. Mean, come on. Write it we down. Got, we got to be better. Journal. I wrote down three things to ask yourself if you're kind of like in something that you're unsure of, whether okay. it be a relationship or you're maybe you're starting to talk to somebody and things we need to think about. Just like ask yourself these three things. If you're like, is this something that I should be aware of? Or like, am I okay? Yeah. Do I just need to relax, take a chill pill. Cause that's also an instance too. Mm -hmm. Um, do I feel like I'm nervous, um, about being hurt all the time? That's question mm. number one. Like, do I feel nervous that I'm going to get hurt? Do I, is there this worrying, anxious little bug that sits in your tummy the entire time you're in the relationship? Cause mm. I've been there before Yeah, and you know, something's wrong. Okay. Your mind knows. Number two, do I feel like he has qualities past? He works out, he has a good family and he has a good job. If those are the three things you're holding on to is like, well, no, no, but, but these three things are like, he's great at that's bare minimum. Yeah. Bare minimum. That's like, not going to carry you for carry. a long time. I think like one thing that like I was like in my head looking for is someone like, they don't have to be necessarily interested in everything I'm interested in, but like, how do they support me? Mm -hmm. Are they excited for me? Like I love horses, huge horse girl. Yep. Justin knew nothing about horses but he's still excited and engaged when I talk about it. He's willing to learn about it. He doesn't shut it down. Like 
you have to have someone that's willing to support you, even if they're not necessarily interested in it or it's not their cup of tea. They do say that's like the secret to a healthy relationship is like caring no matter what the person says, Mm -hmm. like is actually like being um, into what they're talking about and reactive to what they're saying because you care, not because you're forcing it. And ignoring is like the biggest thing that apparently like marriages, especially that'll shut it right down. Yeah. That's literally another thing from John Gottman. He calls them bids. So it's like you get home from work and something happened and you want to tell your partner and you're excited and you're like, oh my God. Okay. Today at work, Jessica, blah, 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 blah. And your partner should turn towards you and engage with you accepting Mm -hmm. your bid. If they decline your bid, it's, oh, you know, I don't have time to talk about this right now. They turn away from you. It's it's declining a bid. And there's little moments that we all do this. Mm-hmm. And that's something to look out for too. Like, so are hurtful. they accepting my bids? Are they engaging with me? That's hurt. Those are hurtful though. Like when you, you're like trying mm-hmm. to tell somebody something and they're on their phone. No. And you're like, my, that hurts my feelings. Like I, I was excited to tell you, or know. you're feeling something and you're kind of sad maybe. Yeah. And you're like, I just feel off about this. And they're on your, their phone. Like that's like the biggest slap in my face oh. that I've ever had. Like, I'm like, Oh my God, just put your phone down for a second. Yeah. But then it goes both ways. You've got to remember to set your phone down too when they want your attention for a second. The final thing I wrote down is, are there flags that I'm ignoring? And really ask yourself, like, am I ignoring things because I want this to work? Like, was there something that happened that was probably a little bit weird Mm -hmm. that maybe I'm ignoring because I want it so fucking bad? Yeah, we all do it. We all do it. If you answered yes to any of those... There's probably something underlying, even in the relationship that you're in, maybe you're way into it, or maybe you're just starting it out. And maybe it's time to just like take a step back, reval, and maybe make a different choice. Maybe get out. Maybe, I don't know exactly. I don't know, you know, the depths yeah. of the relationship, but just that's what I would do. Yeah. I think like, depends on where you're at. Like there's so many things that if this was early on, mm-hmm. it might be a deal breaker. Mm-hmm. But if you're 10 years in, hey, maybe go to couples therapy yeah. and work through it. But again, your partner has to have that bare minimum level of respect for you. Be willing to do those things. Otherwise, I think even after 10 years, you can't let that sunken cost fallacy that I've spent 10 years in this relationship. You can't let that be the reason you stay. Exactly. It's okay to call it. All these little things today, you just said, you're like, it's bringing me back. And I'm like, it is. Like, I've been in the trenches. Oh, yeah. I was down bad for a while. Ooh. Down bad. And sometimes you need to go through these, like, crappy ones or these borderline, like, are they good? Are they not good? Mm-hmm. To really bring you to understanding what you want and what you deserve. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah. Okay, this one's good. All I have to say is I could have never taken the steps forward in a good relationship if I hadn't known myself. Yeah. So, I was jumping. I was the classic. Let's jump from this person to that person to that person. Because you were I get a serial dater. Uh-huh. Well, I would say serial talking to people. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. like borderline dating, but not actually like okay. fully dating. Yeah. Um, and because I found validation in other people and I felt more secure when someone validated me or made me feel like I'm pretty or made me feel yeah. like I'm important or they picked me the classic, like I got picked by this guy. Yes. Like, oh my God. Even though they were just talking to someone else and yeah. oh, that would never happened to me. They're not going to leave me for somebody else. So doing a little bit of soul searching, some alone time, Mm -hmm. even when I knew I was like, I really kind of want to like talk to this guy, but no, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to like, I'm in my zone. I need to think about me. I need to put myself first and learn what I like and dislike saved me for the rest of my, my relationships and all the things that came next. Yeah. Your healing girl era. It was my healing girl era. And I'm not joking. Right after that era was my fiance. The I would, minute after. I would say the same exact thing. It's crazy. And it and it doesn't have to be years. I'm no. Kind of, it was like, I don't know, maybe like nine months, six months for me. I was single for, my relationship ended 2015. Mm-hmm. And I didn't start dating Justin until 2018. Yeah. So it was like three years. Yeah. Well, three and you'd, a half. Probably, you'd probably talk to people in between that then. A couple. Like, yeah, but casually Honestly, maybe. like not many. Like mm-hmm. I, I really had a big healing girl. It was like my fun single girl era. Oh, that's fun though. Yeah. You realize, you really realize what you want and what, like, again, what you need and what you expect and what you tolerate. Yeah. And when you're in your single girl era, you learn about like, oh God, ew, I'm not, that's a weird, that's a weird behavior. I'm not doing that, but I'm not invested. Mm -hmm. So I can easily be like, uh, no, I'm not dealing with that. So it's very clear. Like it's like the water is clear, but it gets really murky when you jump into things too fast and find validation in them. Cause all of a sudden you're attached to this person. You don't even know. Yeah. And you're like, well, no, but I like them. It's like, I can't get out. I can't see the, it's not clear to me anymore. 
single girl era is all for the healing, my friends. So enjoy like, it. Enjoy it. Make friends. Really focus on your relationships, like friendships. Reset your mindset, my friends. Yeah. Okay. So there's this write-in that I got about good guys versus a fine relationship. And I want to talk about this, but I'm just going to read it and then we can decipher. I love it. So it says good guys versus fine relationship. Hi, Sid. Love what you're doing at the pod. You make me excited for Monday mornings. I'm not sure if this is the right place to write in a topic suggestion, but here goes nothing. This morning I was scrolling through my notes app and a year ago today, I wrote a super long note in the form of a diary entry. I was in a three year long relationship living with him near engagement, ah, but I was miserable. He was a good man by all accounts, no cheating or lying on his part, gentle and kind, but there was something missing. And I just couldn't understand why I was just so empty in the relationship. Something deep inside me was screaming to leave. I personally couldn't afford to up and move out on my own. It would have likely required quitting my job and moving two hours back home. Toxic, no good for my mental health and would have lost my cats bad. Um, all this is to say that there was logistically slash financially stuff keeping me there. Through therapy and willpower, I worked up the courage to break up with him and move across the country to Florida with a friend. I'm so thankful for the strength I found somewhere deep down, but I feel very alone in this time of my life. I have some close girlfriends who saw the same flags I did and were supportive, but it was hard to explain to him, myself, and others that he did nothing wrong, but the relationship just wasn't right. I was basically gaslighting myself into feeling crazy and staying. I found myself wishing he would do something tangible like cheat on me or lie just so I could have more of a quote unquote real life reason to leave. Although my life has changed and improved tremendously since leaving, I love to hear you talk about leaving a good guy and a fine relationship when it just isn't right anymore. I could have used the podcast to validate my feelings at the time and make me not feel so alone. So anyway, Sorry, this is long winded. Okay, bye. Oh, I, like you can relate to that wholeheartedly. At oh least I can. I remember like looking for an excuse, like trying to find a reason that would justify like me breaking up with someone. And the bottom line is if you're not completely fulfilled and happy, that's reason enough. You mm -hmm. don't have to settle. And it's, it's obviously so much easier said than done, right? Just like break up. Mm -hmm. No. Obviously, there's so much context there, financial reasons, things like that. But when it comes to it, they might be a great guy, mm -hmm. good guy, great guy, whatever it is, but they're not the perfect match for you. Yeah. And that's okay. Like, don't hold each other up from finding your person. You can still end on good terms just because you're ending doesn't mean you need to have all this animosity towards this other person. Completely. You can just end and remain friends and we're just not each other's people. And it's that's scary. fine. I get that it's scary too, right? Like, it is. But it, but it is, it is okay. And like, I like that you said, just not having a reason is reason enough. Like yeah. you not feeling right is something in your body, like literally chemically reacting to the fact of how you feel and the anxiety or something just not sitting well. Yeah. So just know that you getting out is getting you closer to what you actually want. It's getting, yeah. Like you said, getting in the yeah. way of what's next. You need to just trust your gut that something isn't quite right. Yeah. I remember sitting in a relationship and, um, be careful when you're wishing from karma gods or whatever it is that you're wishing from what you're wishing for could come true because I wish that the person would cheat. I wish that they would do something. Oh, yeah. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I wish. Cause I was like, just something doesn't feel right. Like I wish I knew what it was, but like, yeah. I wish they would do something so I could break it off and feel okay about it. Cause I just, uh, I'm not saying right. What do you know? Karma gods granted my wish because apparently I had been good that year and they cheated. And um, that was my tangible reason, but it made it 10 times harder to get out because then it felt like a, a jab towards me. Mm -hmm. So actually not having a clear cut reason and yeah. just knowing something feels off is kind of a blessing because it, like you said, not messy. You yeah. can still be friends. Just have the the gut validation to know that you are okay alone and mentally prepare yourself too. Yeah. I think if you're going to make any sort of rash decision like that and make, put a lot of thought into it, picture your life alone, picture your life, not having that person to lean on and like really start to be like, okay, could I do this? And is that what I want? Yeah. I also think it's okay to question, is this my person? Like mm -hmm. everything's perfect, but like, is this my person? And my brother and his wife, they've been together now. They got married October 2015, they started dating 
junior year of high school. Oh, wow. And they both had these life paths that took them different places. You know, she moved to Florida for PA school. And during that time, they broke up for a little bit. Yeah. Saw other people to really determine, is this it? And if you're in this stage too, where you're like, everything's great, but is this my person? I think it's totally fine to have a conversation and say, I love you, but I am questioning. Mm -hmm. What do you think about taking a break? Yep. And you define your boundaries. Like we can date other people, but no sex. Yep. You have these big conversations or you say, hey, let's take six months apart. No communication. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we feel. Yeah. And I think that's fine. Like they found their way back together. And there's so many stories that I've heard on, you know, my podcast that we have and it, people come together. Oh yeah, they do. And so it's okay to do that. Like he was a great guy. You might've been able to say, Hey, I'm just not feeling it. I think we maybe start sleeping in separate rooms yeah. or we, we figure out a way to, you know, still live together. But I think, you know, it's not right for both of us. Clearly if you're not feeling well though, like it's gonna, it's gonna take away from like the sexual part of it too, right? Yeah. Like the intimacy part that sounds like there probably is like a lower level of commitment and care. Mm -hmm. So like, cause relationships take nurturing. So all of these things feed into those are all like, that's three reasons I just listed right there that it's not working. So yeah. you're, you actually are totally having reasons right in front of you to, yeah. to do something about it. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, I just, I want people to know that you have a choice. You're not stuck. For Even sure. when every single reason points to I'm stuck. I moved across the country for somebody. It was stupid. I shouldn't have done that. I felt beyond stuck. I was wishing he would do something. I was wishing there was change. But really in all of that, what happened was I was at my lowest point and then I wasn't at my lowest point and then I wasn't at, and I just started gradually coming out of this hole. I never thought I could move across the country and be okay by myself. And I did. I never thought I would make different friends because I, you know, or find a new job yeah. that fulfilled me. And I did. I never thought I had the balls to get over my anxiety of being far away from home. And I did. Mm -hmm. And I ended up solidifying that I didn't move there for him because in the end I didn't, I wasn't there for him. I was there for me. Yeah. So really it, it's a, such a great opportunity to grow and it's scary, but it, it will make you a better and bigger person in the end. Yeah. And I think like we are so capable. I think something too, that like you're sparking a thought in my head is like, we've obviously been talking about like healthy slash just borderline, not a good fit relationships, mm -hmm. but there's people out there that are in very abusive ones too. Oh, yeah. And it is so hard to leave on average. It takes seven attempts to leave. And just know if you sad. are in something like that, you have that in you to leave. You are enough. You are strong enough. And if it's an unhealthy, bad relationship, you don't need to justify it to them. No, It is safer for you to just leave It is, and you can do it. And if you feel like you don't have, you know, family support or friend support, there's many organizations out there yes. that can help you. Um, and you do deserve better. So just know that as well, if you're out there and that kind of relates to you. Oh my God. I, yeah, I, you know, actually my first, I don't talk about it very much. My first relationship was pretty abusive, which is scary. Mm -hmm. And it started with weird behavioral things like, um, wouldn't let me wear leggings cause he didn't want people to like see my body. Like, wouldn't let me watch. Like I watched a movie and there was like a sex scene and I think there was like a penis, like an actual penis in it from like a movie and like that we about broke up. Like, oh you know, gosh. like, and then it got worse and worse and yeah, worse. It starts, and it starts smaller, get, right? Yeah. It starts smaller, but weird where you're like, am I in the, wait, am I in the wrong? Did I do something wrong? Yeah. Like, oh my God, I didn't realize that would hurt someone so bad. I'm so sorry for hurting you. Yeah. So just know when something starts to get intense, that shouldn't be intense. Or we talked about one last week about a guy who got mad at his girlfriend for, um, reaching out into the crowd at a concert to touch the hand of a, oh, no. like, of like what I almost said movie star, but like, like the, whatever, artist. the artist. Yeah. And like that becoming like sexualized and he got like so upset and it was like so wrong. Like th on. these yeah. things are not normal. It's no. a problem with that person. They've got serious, serious mental health things that they need to work on. Yeah. Insecurities, um, something likely maybe from their past, maybe from growing up. We don't know, yeah. but you don't owe them anything. You owe nope. yourself safety. So get the F out of there. Yeah, absolutely. I have a few other write-ins that I want to kind of rapid fire because I think they're going to be it. fun. This one says, I live with my sister and she's two years older than me. She started dating her first ever boyfriend a few months ago, and now he sleeps over at our house constantly. 
Ever since dating him, she has gotten snappy at me and seems like she's only in a good mood when he's around. (laughs) We've always been really close, but now it just seems like we're two people living in the same house. Because of this, I've grown to resent her boyfriend, even though he is super nice. How do I navigate this? Sit her down. It's your sister. You should be able to sit down and have a conversation with her and just use a lot of I feel. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know, like my house isn't my home anymore. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells sometimes and just really try to articulate how uncomfortable you're feeling Mm -hmm. and see if together you can come up with a solution like, hey, you know, maybe you could stay at your boyfriend's house every couple nights or, you know, hey, if your boyfriend wants to come in and take over my lease, maybe I move out and go live with some friends. But use a lot of I feel. I think that helps people not get so defensive. I agree. But you got to have a conversation. You can't expect her to be psychic. And you got to just talk it out and be honest, you know, like without being hurtful, right? Like try not to go in hot headed. Yeah. It's likely, especially since like, I mean, this is not always the case, but I would say 99% of the time first relationship, you're just learning how to navigate. Oh my God. And you don't really know what you're doing. You don't know what's right or wrong and balancing. And she will see the other side. It just will take probably a little while. She's in the honeymoon phase. And like, even though it's the first one, this could still be her person. Yep. But you know, it's, it's new territory and she's not going to know you're uncomfortable unless you tell her Mm -hmm. like, it just is what it is. And I think pointing out, like, I feel like, you know, maybe you don't have as much patience for me when he's not around. Like, how can we work on our communication so we're not biting each other's heads off? Yeah. Just, you got to have a conversation. And it's scary sometimes when it's with people we love. I know. Family. Family sometimes makes it harder. But, I mean, you're really close with your sister. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like you would just have a conversation. Yeah, I would be very honest, though. I'm like, I I, we don't walk on eggshells around each other. You'd be brutally honest. Probably brutally. I almost (laughs) said brutally. And then I'm like, I I don't want I don't suggest this style of communication. No. But that's just how we are. But we always end the convo, like respecting each other. Yeah. We always come back around. So yeah, I would tell her the truth. I'd be like, you're you're intense right now. And it's it's hurting my feelings. And I want to know if something's going on with him. It makes me wonder if something's going on with him that I, that you maybe need me to talk to you about. I'll I'll always listen. I'm always here for you, Yeah, but don't make me feel like I'm not, this isn't my home because it makes me sad that you're hurting my feelings. Yeah. Kind of like approaching it like that. It could be a simple check-in like that. And I wish, like, I'm going to be honest, I've been in this with my college roommate. Oh, Her boyfriend moved in with us. He lived with us. Oh, She would cook him breakfast and dinner every single day. They were, they were constantly in the living room, taking up the TV, watching chopped. Like it was a fifth roommate. So college though. It's so annoying. Yeah. And I didn't have the emotional maturity or the mental maturity to have that conversation. And like you do, and this is your sister. You can do this. You got it. And just make it a calm, casual little check-in say, I've been feeling like a little on edge, you know, whatever you're feeling, I feel big I feel. She should understand. She should hear you. And even if she gets a little irritated in the beginning, especially with family, let her digest it and give Mm -hmm. it like a week after the convo and just kind of keep it chill and cool, calm and collected. Keep checking in. And keep checking in. But she will come around. I promise. She'll understand. You got it. This next one says, I need advice in all caps. Almost a month into talking to this guy, went on two dates with plans to hang out more. Had a wine night at his house and we cuddled and held hands, but he didn't try and hook up. His intentions look really relationship promising. He also talks to me, reaches out and initiates every single day. However, I'm moving for a clinical rotation in three weeks for three months to be, and I'll be about two and a half hours away. I don't want to give up on him, but don't want to ask him to do long distance when we're first starting to talk. How do I tell him I want this long term and I want to be exclusive, but not get aggressive with wanting to be exclusive. Oh my God. This literally sounds like me and Justin. Yeah. So I met Justin when I was in grad school and I was doing clinical rotations all over. Like I didn't even have control over where they placed me. So I could have ended up in Chicago. I ended up in Palm Springs, which was actually two and a half hours away from LA. And it's so easy to do long distance. Like I drove back I lived in a haunted house, so I drove back every weekend. You lived in a haunted house? Yeah, it was really oh, bad. Oh, you told me about it. It was one really time. bad. We need to have a ghost one we'll later do, in the year. But we'll do spooky. Yeah. I love it. But I ended up coming back every weekend. But if I wouldn't have, like, he could have came out and visited. You're in a clinical rotation. They don't last forever. Have a conversation. I really like you. I really like where this is going. I'm not sure if you feel the same way. I would love to keep talking. 
but I don't want to put any pressure on mm-hmm. us. Like I recognize I'm going to be two hours away. Long distance might be tough. What do you think? Communicate, communicate, yeah. communicate. It seems like he's really into you. Oh my God. You're everything really into him. Like, so it's all great. the wonderful things. Like this is what you want. And he didn't push you to like, I mean, like there was like a very casual hangout with a little wine on the I couch. It was cozy. It, it's not, I mean, the other parts of it sound like Jordan and I, cause we took it very, very slow, yeah. you know, and it's very, it's, it's a good sign when it's slow, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Right. Um, so I would do the same exact thing. Yeah. Communicate what you're doing. Be like, no pressure. I really like hanging out with you though. And I, I don't want to stop, but I will be, you know, three or excuse me, two and a half hours away. Yeah. It's going to be about three months. Maybe I'll be back on the weekends. Like no pressure. Like Come what, visit what me. are you thinking? Don't self-sabotage yeah. because you're scared of long distance. Yeah. So many people make long distance work and maybe you're even self-sabotaging because in your head, you don't think you're worth doing long distance with. Oh. Like kind of unpack that because it's a clinical rotation. You're not moving forever. Yeah, we're going to be back. You're going to be back. And there's cars, planes, trains, automobiles. They're all around. You there, can still move. There's ways to still interact, Zoom, Skype, whatever, FaceTime. Don't self-sabotage. And he it'll sounds be kind good. of fun when you come back. I, I think know. it'll be like really like, it'll be like, oh my God, what an exciting reason to like get back. You this know what is, I mean? This is really exciting. I'm happy for you. Yeah. I, I'm not worried about this, this is at fun, all. This is a fun one. This next one says how to let go of a guy. A guy I was dating for six months popped up on my social media with a hard launch of his new girlfriend, who I'm pretty sure he started dating two weeks after we ended things. Hmm. I'm pretty upset, even though it has been a few months since then. We had to break up because I was moving abroad for grad school and I had really strong feelings for him. Seeing this made me feel like everything we started was fake or meaningless. So I unfollowed him about a month ago. However, tonight... I made the mistake of going on social media and saw her Instagram was public and saw all of these photos and videos of them on trips, literally to the Bahamas and stuff. Ugh. And it just made me really upset. I know I did it to myself. And so this is all my fault, but how do I let him go? I feel like I've been stuck with these sad and negative feelings for so long and I just want to be free. Thanks, Ed. Been there. Oh, babes. Been there. Oh, it like hurts my heart because I know where you're feeling and I know how da- like dark of a place that is. Yeah. But you, I mean, to be honest with you, being across the country was not going to work. You had to follow your passions. That's what you did. And I'm, I think what is probably happening here because just moving is usually not a reason to end things completely. You may have been willing to end things exactly. for moving because of some other things that were wrong in the relationship. Yeah. But it's really, really, really hard when you feel like someone's moved on fast or picked something else or someone else. Yeah. So I think you're having this like episode of behavior feeling like, oh my God, I didn't get picked or like, oh my God, I didn't, you know, he didn't like me yeah. that much because you ended it and he probably needed someone to latch on to, to feel secure too. Yeah. I mean, we all want what we can't have sometimes. Classic. Classic. Um, my ex before Justin broke up with me in a text message and then was posting on Instagram with his new girlfriend a week later. Excuse me? Yeah. I know she, by that math and you're, you're kind of doing the math too. She probably existed before you guys were done. I hate that. And that's reason enough. That's not a good person. That's not someone you want to be with. Honestly, it is hard to move on. We all let curiosity kill us sometimes and we creep. Try not to block them, mute them, do whatever you have to do. But you're in a new city. You're in grad school. You're at such a fun, fun part in your life. Go on dates. Start dating. Download an app. Go to coffee bars. Go to places that you like and you're interested in. Exactly. Start meeting people, having fun. There's the saying, like, sometimes the best way to get over someone is to get under someone new. Oh, I love that, though. Do it. If that's what you need, if then that's what you go need, for do it. it. Go date. Be you're going to you're gonna find your person. And he's not it. You're also in a really anxious period of time where you're about to move across the country or it sounds like overseas somewhere. Yeah. And that's, that's okay to feel anxious and yeah. feel like you need something secure to make you feel good. I cried every day before I went to grad school. Oh my God. Every day. That, it's every uncomfortable. Day. It's uncomfortable. It's scary. Yeah. So you're you putting want, yourself out there. You're longing for something to feel secure. That's okay. Yeah. But like lean into this amazing period of time yeah. where you're going to feel all these new feelings and emotions. And like you're saying, go do all the things, yeah. go do like adventurous things. Oh my God. Like, I mean, like for God's sake, like go visit 
like a different city with a new friend and like meet people through other people's friends. Yeah. I guarantee there's going to be somebody there that catches your eye. And once you start to get to know them, they're going to bring better qualities than that other person did. So oh my God, this is the perfect time. The perfect way to meet people. You're going to grad school. There's going to be other people in your cohort. They're going to be from out of town, abroad, whatever. Go adventure, make friends, invest in relationships that are going to last you longer than maybe a romantic one would. God, you got it. You got this. You got it. You really do. Okay. I think I'm going to do one or two more, but we'll see. This one is jealousy related. Hey, Candid said, I really need advice on jealousy and whether or not I should ask my boyfriend to be taken off his ex's private story on Snapchat. I think me and my boyfriend's relationship is very, very strong. Like I definitely think he is my person and hasn't given me any reason to think he's not. We have been dating for almost a year. I feel like I'm always comparing myself though to his ex. And it just bothers me that he's still on her private story because I don't know what she posts on there. Just advice on how to approach the situation and jealousy in general. Love your podcast, girl. Keep it up. This is a really tough one. It's a funky feeling. I, yeah, I think there's a lot of conversations happening like recently, but like they've been happening about like your boyfriend or whatever, liking other girls' pictures on Instagram. Yep. And this kind of approaches that territory of like, you, like, this is your ex. Why do you need to be on her close friend's story? Why does she even want you on there? Because I personally wouldn't want my exes on mine. That's, it's, there's something to unpack here. And I think if you haven't asked him to be taken off, I think you could have that conversation. Can you leave it or like, how? I mean, just I, remove that person maybe? I wonder if he blocked her and then unblocked her if it would remove him so he doesn't have to approach her. Probably. There's maybe a tricky way around that, but I think it's fair to have the conversation and just like ask him like, you know, this is an ex. We're happy we're together. You know, what are you getting out of this? I'm wondering how she knows this though. She probably sees it. I mean, he's like is he's on, on Instagram. It? Yeah, yeah, true. Or Snapchat, it sounded like. I just wonder, because that seems, it just seems a little uh, funky. Like she clearly probably wants him still there. Like usually, I, yeah. I mean, as far as what I know about close friend stories are usually it's like your, your witty humor, like funny memes, like realness yeah. about your life. It's and for then, the girls. I'm it's for the girls. Mine's for the girls. Yeah. I have a bunch of friends that I literally, my one friend, she freaking posts the most hilarious shit on there. I keep up with her dating on there. Like it's yeah. all the shit that she talks about. And she's oh God, like, bro. I love that. And like with screenshots of conversations with people, it's so savage, but it's, it's on her close friends. There's like 20 of yeah. us, I'm sure. Um, but it seems like the girlfriend probably wants him there because she's talking about yeah. things that he he would get jealous of. I'm sure she's hoping that he sees it because that's the only reason they'd be there. Um, I would have a conversation about how it hurts your feelings a little bit, makes you feel a little uncomfortable. And I would gauge the situation by the way that he reacts. That if he's willing to prioritize his ex's feelings or uh, like doesn't want to con- have like this confrontation or ask his ex – that would get my spidey senses tingling. Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Mm, maybe he's not so willing to move past her. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some reasons why, you know, he's still interacting with her. Am am I a placeholder to make her jealous? You know, there's, there's things to look out for based on how he reacts. Agreed. I think it's a fair conversation to have and ask him. I think that's kind of something I look for where it's like, yeah, my, my partner can have female friends, Mm -hmm. but if he's putting those female friends feelings or prioritizing them over me, that's a red flag that I'm not willing to tolerate. Agreed completely. hundred percent on every level. I even, I don't know how to tell this story without giving away too much, but I'll try to keep it short. I had a friend from a different time of my life. We saw them on a trip, this person, and, um, she just so happens to do a lot of like sexual shoots and like different things like that. Yeah. And she followed my, you know, boyfriend. Oh no. And he followed her back because he met her in like real life. Like it wasn't weird. No. And she, I mean, literally every day posts like thirst straps. Like it's like very, like I'm talking like full naked photos, like butt out and stuff. And I just had a conversation with my boyfriend. I was like, Hey, um, I love her. She's in a different stage of life right now. I love her as a person but it makes me really uncomfortable knowing that every day that you go on Instagram, you see her like topless photo in the shower at the shoot that she did or like just stuff like that. And it's uncomfortable immediately. They were like, 
I completely under actually understand why that would make you feel uncomfortable. I am totally okay with unfollowing them. Like, and it was over and done with. Yeah. Because, but I felt bad because they had followed, you know, the girl had followed him because we were out to dinner and he met her in yeah. a normal setting and she's one of my good friends. And it was very clear, you know, in person she's, you know, wears clothes and is normal and cash. I think it's just, that's but just, it's just not the account to follow. It if, she, if she had a personal account where she shares like puppy pics and whatever yeah. else, that's a little different, but this and is very, friend. yeah, it's, it's weird. I think sometimes we associate typically negative feelings where, oh, I'm jealous or I'm feeling insecure as like, oh, that's negative. My relationship isn't that good. Yeah. That's not always the case. No. Sometimes it's okay to like have these little moments of jealousy or insecurity. And as long as you're addressing them and working past them, that's a great sign. And honestly, this is so weird, but Jordan told me the other day that he thought it was really cute that I was like, it made me pissed off that someone called him like Jordy. That was like, I just like, don't like when people call my fiance by nicknames. Like I just think too, it's annoying. Yeah. I don't like it. And I, I have a few friends that do it and they, they're, they don't mean anything by it, but I, I was on a hot, I was feeling a little <laughs> hot headed that day. I have my period. If you want me to really be truthful, then they call them Jordy. And I'm like, I don't like that. They call you Jordy. I don't like that at all. And he was like, yeah, I like that. You just got irritated. It's like, you're protective of me. And I was yeah. like, I know I'm sorry. I am. You know what is giving? We've all seen those TikToks, right? Of like the guy that has the girlfriend and is like, oh yeah, you're dating Steve now. Me and his mom are so close. Oh We're, Jesus. I'm basically a part of the family. We all know those girls. And I just saw a video of this girl who was giving a speech at a wedding and she was the groom's ex-girlfriend. Excuse me? And she said it in the speech at the wedding. I'm Cody's ex-girlfriend. I had him first. What the that? That is unacceptable. Who? Okay, unacceptable. In what world is the bride allowing her to be there slash important enough to give a speech? Excuse no. me? And again, that's one of those things. If your partner is unwilling to set those healthy boundaries with people that act like that, you don't want them. You don't want them. They're you not for them. you. Oh no. God, that poor girl who's getting married to this man. I cannot. No. I cannot. No. Um, okay. I'm going to do one more to wrap up our episode and just like a little more advice for you guys out there, because I try to get through these. You guys send me a lot and I'm like, I'm so happy. I you love do. these write-ins. I know me too. Okay. So I met this dreamy ass man at my aunt's wedding for some crazy context. We have been to a lot of the same places this summer and didn't even know it. Anyway, we stayed at this wedding venue for a weekend. So we hung out with him for about three days. So much chemistry. I feel like I don't fall for guys easily and I'm usually very skeptical, but I indeed have fallen for him. We exchanged numbers and we live about six hours away from each other. And he said that he's willing to come and see me, but he's a working man and he hardly has service. So we only text every so often and he's a terrible texter. And I usually am too. So do I grow some lady balls and call him and go visit him, which I brought up many times. And he really likes that idea, but I'm down bad and I have never had a boyfriend. So I don't know how to, to trust the process. Sorry, this was long, by the way. I love the rebrand of the pod. Oh, that was nice. Okay. So she's basically Ooh. debating if she goes and sees this man who doesn't have service a lot, doesn't text very much, had a dreamy three-day three day encounter at a resort at her aunt's wedding. Are your alarm bells going off a little? I am. Yeah, I have alarms. I'm not going to lie. I, I get not everyone's big texting, but like why not like phone calls then if he's that interested and yeah, you're six hours away. The relationship is going to start with texting, like get it together, dude. Yeah. The fact that you've already brought up, I'd love to come visit, but he's not getting the balls moving. This kind of leads back to the beginning of if he wants to, he will. I know you might have great chemistry. It might've been really fun, but maybe it was just like the wedding high. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's that interested in you. I and hate to say it. There's but just not any effort being made on his part. The whole, I don't have service thing. Literally, I'm like, where do you live? That's how my ex-boyfriend got away with it. That's what I'm saying. I don't have service. Where do you live? I you're li not, like you said at the beginning of the episode, you're not in the fucking North Pole. Does he not have Wi-Fi at his house? I can't with that. The no service thing sounds like an escape from like, I, you know, the classic, like, I don't want to FaceTime. Like, I don't, my service is kind of bad. Let's just text. And then they don't text you. Like, that's just a flag to me. Yeah. I've had exciting flings where yeah. I got really excited about somebody who lived in actually California and- um, it was so fun and it was like felt different. And we were like, Oh my God, let's, we can still keep this kind of going, whatever. Then I went back home to Minnesota. Things just died. Fizzled. You know what I mean? Like yeah. fizzled, no text. And I actually wasn't yeah. like that upset about it. Like I still had this feeling like I liked him, but I kind of knew just being how far away from we are, you know, each other we were. Yeah. And I'm like, it probably would fizzle. And I was okay with that. 
this one, it sounds like in the moment you guys had an amazing, strong connection and the whole like, oh my God, I don't care about the six hours as you're sitting, you know, three days into knowing each other. Well, and you're already making uh, excuses too. I'm a bad texter too. Are you really though? Are I, you really? What, how would I handle this? I would probably say, hmm, I would call, I would call him and just see how he takes it. Like if you were like, Hey, I know you're a bad texter, but I would love to come see you. And I know this is kind of like me just shooting my shot, but I would either like to come see you or it doesn't really make sense for us to keep talking. Cause it's we're so far away. So yeah. do you want me to plan a visit or do you think we should just kind of let this fizzle and like being so upfront and communicative about that, I think might give you the answer you want, even though it might, you might be shaking your armpits are going to be swelling, sweating. I know you might poop your pants. Like, I don't yeah. know. I think you have to either. <laughs> there's a saying that comes to mind for me is like shit or get off the pot. Yeah, exactly. You got to like, see if this is actually real. Give him a shot. Hey, I'm free this weekend. What weekend are you free? Does this line up? I can come there or you can come here, but let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's see if there's something here. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to fizzle and being okay that it might fizzle if it's, yeah. if that's the reason, like you're far, it's, I'm sorry, but you're far away. You're six hours away. And there's been like almost zero to none communication yeah. because he's busy. It sounds a little like disinterested. It sounds like my ex-boyfriend. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. not going to lie, girl. It, it's, it's sound a little shady to yeah. me right now. And I don't usually go down this rabbit hole of like toxicity, but go look at his Instagram tagged pictures. Oh, like I think sometimes guys will hide girlfriends and That's... go away on weekend trips. Have you ever known about someone who had a girlfriend and then they cheated and then you didn't know if you should tell them or not? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And usually I, I, I would tell someone closer so that it's a little more appropriate because I, I just can't like it's hard to be the one, but I would, I've been the girl Ugh. that didn't know. So that I, I, I like really would hope that someone would have told me. Yeah. So I always would like find someone close ish and just be like, Hey, like this is really awkward, but I know this piece of information. Like I, I want you to know it, but, but it's hard. I just went through this actually. Oh, you did? Yeah. And it was very much so like a kill the messenger situation. Um, it's a guy that I'm, I've worked with, like he's mm -hmm. also like a fellow podcaster in LA mm -hmm. and we have a mutual friend. Um, and so I told the mutual friend, I was like, Hey, like I heard this piece of info. It's oh. very credible. Um, she's cheating on him with like G easy. Oh, why is this man everywhere? Literally. And so what I told her, I told her and I was like, I don't feel like I'm close enough to tell him I think, you know, obviously you work with him. You're really close. Like, I think you should be the one to tell him. And she did. And I, I don't, I don't think it went well for her. It was like really uncomfortable. My name got thrown under the bus then. Oh, Jesus. It was just like this super uncomfortable situation. And like they're together, they're having a baby now. It's just like this whole thing. So it's like. Out of all the people you could cheat with, I'm like, really? Jeezy? Like my friend used to hook up with him. I know, I know two people that have hooked up with him. He hooks up with everyone. He's, he's around. He's and then everywhere. he also cheated on Halsey. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, Jeezy. Yeah. So like sometimes it pays. I wish there was like an anonymous service where you could just like go online and like just. Well, that Facebook group. Yeah. Just like. Da -da -da -da. The Facebook group that talks about the guys. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Are we dating the same person? Yeah. Yeah, there's that. That which one's maybe, scary. I don't want to go in there. I'm scared. I just wish there was an anonymous service to be like, hey, um, I didn't know he was dating someone. We hooked up. Here's the info. Mm. Contact me if you want. But like, oh, it's just so hard because it is oftentimes. I know. Kill the messenger. I know. But it's the right thing to do. I won't lie. I was in a situation one time where my friend was like, hey, I think that there's someone else involved. Like, yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like. I don't want to explain it. This girl wants to talk to you. And so she called me and it was really fucking weird. And she was saying things that I was like, oh my God, like this is, this is real. Like she, ah, like she was like yeah. seeing him the whole time I was yeah. seeing him apparently. Yeah. And the only thing that ended up being bad was she like turned him against me. Like said, I was the one reaching out to her trying to figure it out oh, man. because he was like, he was mad at her for like Let her ruining him. things with me or something like that. And, and then, but then I like ended up turning out to be the bad guy. And he's like, you're crazy reaching out to my ex. I'm like, how the F would I know that that's your ex? I don't even know who this is. She's calling me. And, yeah. but then, and then I was like, wait, I'm fighting like literally dumb with dumber. 
and I need to just let it go. Dodge so, the bullet. Dodge the fucking bullet. Dodge the Thank bullet. Thank God. Thank God. We didn't get to this, but I just want to say there's definitely fa- fun phases of relationships and fun ones that I would get rid of. The one phase of relationship, I just want to throw this out there that I would get rid of, ladies, is wearing makeup to bed when you're first having sleepovers with your mans. Oh, my God. Don't I've, wear the makeup to bed. I gave myself such bad acne for oh that. Oh, my God. Ooh. And my, I, I ripped out all my eyelashes cause I was wearing mascara to bed, you know, Aww. cause you're like, and then you sleep on your face or whatever, yeah. or you don't sleep because you want to sleep on your side, cozy and cuddled up. And then your neck, you wake up and you got a kink in your neck and shit like that. It ain't that important. No, they know that you wear makeup. They know that you take off the makeup. They know what you look like underneath. They will eventually if they're a good guy. Yeah. So it shouldn't matter wh- whether you're wearing makeup to bed or not. So just skip the mascara and bed stage. Yeah. Shall also- we? If you have one of those guys that's like, take her swimming on the first date. Oh, you dodged a bullet. Let him Disgust. let him show himself out. Like, take the makeup off. Be comfy. Bring those makeup wipes or balm. Do you watch um, Love is Blind? Nah, uh, some, some of the seasons I've dabbled with. Did you see the season where, oh my God, I wish I knew their names, but the blonde, it was a blonde girl and a, like an American guy. And they were the first people to get engaged on the, it was the most recent season. Is it season. the most recent one? Yes. I saw like a TikTok clip of him being like, you pretended to be someone you weren't because you wore makeup. Yeah. Psycho. No, she literally, she ended, she called off the engagement because she, he Good. literally said, he admitted because he was acting really weird. And at oh, first you no. think it's her fault because they, they're on their first date after on like a group vacation, they're engaged. He finally admitted that it was because she came out wearing a lot of makeup and it grossed him out because he said he doesn't like girls who wear fake lashes and makeup. Oh my God. And she was like, I'm fucking done. I'm done. And he, he like gaslit her. He's like, that's like, it's insane. It's like, it's so fake of you and all this stuff. And I just, I'm so glad we're in a, in a world now where it's like, no, dude, you're the idiot. Like, yeah. sorry, that's creepy yeah. that you even cared about that. That's so strange. It's makeup. So strange. Like, it makes, it's fun. It makes you feel good. It's not, a lot of times makeup is not for you. It's not for no. anyone else, like the guy. No. Nope. It's truly for the person putting it on. Yeah, because I feel a little bit more like myself. Like, yeah. I don't know, I just feel like I got all done up and I, yeah. I feel a little bit more me. Yeah, the you know? front the front of my eyebrow is actually there because I drew it on. Exactly. I, I feel great. I know. I'm like, I literally have the same thing. I have a tail missing over here yeah. and a little section missing on this one from yeah. like where I got hit in the face in lacrosse. So like I draw it in and yeah. I don't, I just feel better. It's for me. It's for me. It's and not I for you. Good. Yeah. Bottom line of this whole episode about relationships, dating, all the things to bring it like full, beautiful circle is you come first. Your gut will tell you when something is wrong. So be aware and listen to it. Yeah. And don't wait for shit to hit the fan. Please, for the love of God, trust your gut before the stuff hits the fan because eventually it will, especially if you're feeling something. Yeah. I also think like prioritize yourself and your yeah. happiness. Yep. Um, something that like I realized lately, a lot of times in relationships, I, as a woman, Mm -hmm. have sacrificed my happiness, my opportunities to visit someone, to make our relationship work, and the right one will work. Do you be happy? Make sure you're looking out for yourself, your career, your education, whatever that looks like. The right one will, will be there. They will fight for you if they want to be there, like, mm-hmm. and as you will too on the other side and the yeah. flip side of that. So just be mindful of all of those things and yeah. feeling secure. And let me tell you, a good relationship with mommy, a working out and a good job ain't cutting it, babes. We, we need to have a lot more than that. We need to have curiosity in what you're doing. We need to have yeah. passions. We need to be um, making effort. We need to be doing all of the things. So yeah. know that you're worth it. Know that if you're in something bad, get the hell out of it. Um, and we're here to support you and love you. And you can always call me. Please. Ah, look at this little phone. Call it's me. right I've here. I've got a little phone. It's right here. It's available. I will change your voice. I will make sure no one knows it's you. So please give me a call. My number is 612-470-7569. It's on my social media. It's on all the places. Give me a call. Tell me what you need advice for, and we will talk about it, and I will get other people's opinions on it, too. So please, please, please do that. Yeah. I want to come to your call-in happy hour you're going to do. I know. You should come. I'm going to come. That'd be fun. I'm going to come. I'll I'll tune in. We'll do it soon. I'll tune in. Okay. Morgan's going to tune in. So I'm going to have a little happy hour, and I'm going to have an open 
you know, forum where you can just call me and I will speak to your advice and we will talk about it and I will it's gonna be good. help you and we will scheme and we will do all the things. So it's, it's no topic is off limits. Um, Morgan, thanks for coming on and having fun. Thank you for having me it's again. It's Christmas break. We're just chilling. It's cozy. Um, it's not snowing here yet, which is kind of lame. It but feels criminal. Yeah, it does. To not have snow in Minnesota in December, it yep. feels like it should be illegal. Yep. And you're telling me something isn't going on with the earth when there's no snow in Minnesota in December? It was, it was 49 degrees and raining yesterday. Yep. I know. That's not normal. That's ain't, that ain't normal. The lakes are not frozen. And I saw people out there the other day and I'm like, <gasps> isn't that so scary? Yeah. I'm like, I want to yell and be like, what the hell are you doing? Someone had to get rescued from the Coast Guard up in Duluth. No. An ice sheet broke off and they started floating away. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Don't do it guys. Stay, don't even stay risk safe. it. Stay, stay safe. safe out there. Stay safe out there. Um, Morgan, why don't you shoot out your handles, but you probably already know where to find Morgan because she's the queen of two hot takes. It's called two hot takes on everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, just pop on over. But I'll I'll be here popping in and oh, out. You will. You know, this is my like bi monthly thing with Sid now. Mm-hmm. I, I'm inserting myself. I've invited myself. No, it's the we have the it's most okay. fun it's conversations. Fine. Though. It's fine. Morgan is gonna be a reoccurring. My sister is gonna be a reoccurring. We're gonna give you all the call set advice that you need. So I promise keep coming back. Cause I'm just trying to make things more digestible for you. And I'm always gonna be the older sister that maybe you had this was or maybe good. you never had. Yeah, right? so that's what magical. I'm hoping for. I wish I would have had this. <sighs> Me too. I'm like, I'm trying to give people info that I wish I had <laughs> yeah, or needed. Exactly. Um, at Well Said on all of the places, Well Said Podcast. Um, it's Well Said with Sid. That's who I am. That's where I'll be. If you could go subscribe on YouTube, please and subscribe. thank you. Subscribe. That helps me. Yeah. You know, so please go do that um, if you don't mind. And honestly, if you miss Scotty or Deacon and you don't even know who the hell that is, you better go look at YouTube because yeah. there's little fur creatures that They're are climbing all over cuties. the place today. Um, thank you. Have an amazing, amazing holiday if you're hanging out on the holiday and I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.